Okay, hello everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Great, great to have you with us. This is uh, chapter five. We finally made it out of the kind of theoretical stuff, and now we're going to start talking about regions in the world. And the one we're starting with is the one closest to home, the United States and also Canada. Chapter five is pretty short. It's about the physical geography of the United States and Canada. So first, let's talk about the land of the United States and Canada. Now, if we start off in the west, at the Pacific Ocean, we start going east, we run into a lot of mountains. These mountains are caused by the collision of tectonic plates, which have helped create uh, different mountain ranges like the Sierra Nevadas and the Rocky Mountains and lots of other ones. The farther east you go, eventually you run into the Great Plains, which make up the middle part of North America, and they gradually slope towards the Mississippi. In fact, each mile east you go towards the Mississippi, you drop down about 10 feet. It seems like it's flat, but it's actually very gently sloping east. So you get to the Mississippi then, and you go east where you bump into Maryville, of course. We keep rising up in elevation towards the Appalachian Mountains, and then we drop back down towards the Atlantic Ocean. Now, what's great about North America, and which has been really good for us, as people who live here is that we have tons of different rivers. So here are some important terms about rivers that we're going to come across a lot. So a divide is a high point or a ridge that determines the direction in which water and rivers will flow. So when we talk about divides we usually talk about like the continental divide which is in the western part of the United States and determines where water will flow. Will it go towards the Atlantic or will it go towards the Pacific? Another important term for rivers is called a headwater, and this is a source of a river. Any place that a river starts is called the headwater. We also talk about tributaries, which are smaller rivers that join with a bigger river. Now, the most famous example of a river in the United States is probably the Mississippi. The Mississippi River system is one of the most important commercial waterways in the entire world. It's like a highway where tons of goods are moved throughout American history. Another really important one is the Great Lakes, of course, which were formed, as we've talked about, by glaciers. These glaciers left behind great mineral deposits, and that actually helped drive development in the region as we industrialized and urbanized. What's cool about the Great Lakes is that it allows people to move goods from, like Chicago, all the way to the Atlantic Ocean. They do this along the St. Lawrence Seaway system, which links the Great Lakes and the Atlantic Ocean. The United States and Canada has tons of natural resources. North America has mineral resources, which have helped speed our industrialization. They have natural resources like fossil fuels and rare metals and timbers and fishes. In fact, coastal waters of the Atlantic, Pacific, and Gulf of Mexico have been some of the most important fisheries in the entire world. A fishery is a place for catching fish or other sea animals. Recently, there's actually been a steep decline in fish in these areas because of overfishing. This has led to aquaculture, which is fish farming, basically. It has become an important part of the economy in the United States and Canada. Now we move into section two, which is all about the different climate and vegetation regions in Canada and the United States. So we start off in the south. In the southeast especially, there's the humid subtropical climate, which has rainy and long summers. There's, it's really hot and muggy and kind of gross and sticky, but they also have pretty mild winters. The south is also affected by hurricanes, which are huge ocean storms with strong winds and rains that cause lots of flooding in the south, especially along the coastal regions. When we go out west, there are all sorts of warm and dry climates. The rain shadow effect, which we talked about in chapter three, is when air hits a mountain range, and dumps all the water on one side, and then none of it gets to the other side. This has created deserts and steppe climates in the western United States. There are also Mediterranean climates in California, where there's less rain just automatically off the ocean. 
and we live in what's considered a northern climate. We're pretty far from the ocean, and as a result, we don't have like the Gulf Stream to keep us warm. Instead, the Great Plains and the Great Lakes regions have a humid continental climate with bitterly cold winters. Across this area, there are lots of prairies, which are naturally treeless expanses of grasses spread across the Great Plains and the Great Lakes. As I'm sure you've experienced in even your own life, during the spring and the summer around here, there are supercells. These are big thunderstorms that spawn uh, tornadoes, and they come across much of the central United States. This area is, as you've probably heard, called Tornado Alley because of the huge amounts of tornadoes that we have every year. There are also coastal climates, which are especially along the west coast. These experience you know, high levels of rain depending on the interplay between ocean and wind currents. And of course, since we're talking about the United States and Canada, we also have to talk about high latitudes. There are a lot of places in Canada and Alaska that lie within the high latitudes. They have subarctic climates. They also have lots of winter blizzards. Now we have some blizzards, but they have blizzards. They're not as bad as they are the farther north you go. And of course, the farther north you go, the colder it gets. Portions of northern Canada and Alaska, in fact, it never becomes warm enough to have like a growing season. Instead, they have tundra and ice cap climates. So that does it for chapter five. It's a pretty short one talking about the land. And I suspect that most of you already know a lot of that stuff just because we live around here. We've experienced tornadoes. We've experienced blizzards. We know what that kind of stuff is. So hopefully you feel like this is a good review and didn't take too long. Okay, thanks for watching. Have a great day.